Welcome to our discussion of Cold Comfort Farm on this Super Bowl Sunday, 2023. Um, Dr. Holly Walker not only recommended this delightful book and movie for us, um, but also she will be facilitating too. So I'm going to turn it over to Holly for the time being, let her kind of take it away, and then we'll go from there. So first of all, I told Emily this, but um. Uh, I take care of my father who's 90. Oh my gosh. And, and now, no, you can't go in. Also two dogs. Um, my dad was in the hospital for a little while and, uh, he has Alzheimer's. And so if he starts making scary noises, I'm going to get up and run away. Um, but, uh, um, thanks for coming. Um, so those of us who got on before two chatted a little bit, but I just, I want to know what you what y'all think. So first of all, well, yeah, did, who read it all the way through? Did everybody read the book all the way through? It's okay and, if you didn't. And watch the movie. Yep. <laughs> okay. And watching the movie is fine. So I did both yes. as well. <laughs> yeah. Who who anybody watched the movie only? No. no. So Nancy, did, I I couldn't couldn't get the movie. Okay. I, I okay. tried it in my library, and I'm sorry, I had too many other things happening in my no life. Worries. I did not no read worries. the book. I read a synopsis, and okay. it's so confusing. Well, <laughs> well one, of, many one, one day you will find the movie, and and I predict you will be delighted, because yes. it really is quite wonderful. Uh-oh. Hang on a second. I'll take over for a moment. Yes, it really is quite wonderful. So I think a lot of us did watch the Kate Beckinsale version as well um, of Cold Comfort Farm, which is also a lot of fun too. Um, Kirk, go ahead. I saw your hands up. Yeah, and so I only saw a bit of it, but the the irony for those who haven't seen it, because it's Kate Beckinsale, I think that relates directly to the book, both obviously that she was Emma, in uh, 96 but also that she was lady susan yeah i don't know if holly will touch on it but there's a uh, plenty of emma but there's yes. also plenty of lady susan now not lady susan bad but <laughs> lady susan in flora yes flora yeah flora okay. post yeah. yeah thank you yeah no i i i love that she is so emma-esque she yeah is a delightful character. Um, I found her a little bit more endearing in the movie than in the book. In the book, she irked me a little bit more than she did in the movie. Um, but she just loves managing everything around her. A little bit different than Emma. Emma's more concerned about, you know, getting everyone about half paired up and matched up. But Flora seemed to want to manage everything, including love lives, not yeah. just love lives. So... So we were talking about the comparison between Emma and Flora a little bit. She had better luck than Emma. She <laughs> she was more successful. She had much better luck than Emma. Dudley, I need you to be quiet for a while. Okay, <laughs> thank you. So it's okay. So yeah, she yeah. definitely was more right. successful in her management. And uh, um, she's also so I I looked up I made a few comparisons because you know I raised that in the. Oh, good grief. Now who's unhappy? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and, and since I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Since I made the comparison in my little abstract about what we discussed between Flora and Emma, I looked up a few things. So I'm by no means an expert on British uh geography but um emma takes place in surrey is that right um which is just north of sussex and they keep talking about i don't know i guess sussex is apparently a really weird place i it's not uh, um not exactly what i thought of as all that strange it's not you know um the north it's not durham or or uh um yorkshire uh um one of the things I thought about was that um, since we we uh, last discussed Longbourn, I thought at first, well, this is appropriate to follow Longbourn because um, it shows us another set of people who rarely or never appear in 
in Austin's novels, which is the local peasantry. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, no, no, this is Robert Martin. Reuben, Reuben Starkadder is Robert Martin. So imagine Emma, if both her parents were dead and instead of being rich, she had a hundred pounds a year and she went to live with Robert Martin and managed his life so well that he actually proposed. Yeah. Uh, no, that's that's crazy just to think about the class dichotomy because yeah. you're right. Florida doesn't have a lot of money. And I'm assuming, you know, this is taking place in what, 1940s, 1930s? Yeah, a made up 19. So it's, yeah, it's like set in a made up 1940s for whatever. It's published in 1932, but for some reason she sets it in the 40s, which seemed a really stupid idea given what happened. Right. In, you know, mm. but how is she going to know that? So, yeah. yeah. So, some made up 1940s England, yeah. 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 Uh, no, I mean, and, the, and I'm just thinking 100 a year in 1940s is going to be a lot more than it was in 1800, you know, and even then it's still not a lot, but right. it's still going to be more if you think about it than the comparison between the... I have, I have a question. I, for some reason, wanted to put it in the 20s or sometime between the wars because of the the airplanes and the yeah, it, and I think is, the movie definitely did that because of the fashion <laughs> and everything did I get that wrong or so she says um so on the very first page it says let other pens dwell on guilt and misery with a note that that comes from Mansfield Park and then it says note the action of the story takes place in the near future okay so and and there are occasional references to um, events in history, like the uh, the guy who takes her to the ball at uh, d to Dick Mon Dick Hawk Monitor's twenty uh, first birthday party. He mm -hmm. was in some war in the forties. It's not the war we think of, but um, so so yeah. It's just I mean you know it's like in how nineteen eighty four is not really like 1984. Another yeah. sticking point, it actually does say that her father, that the Spanish plague, the influenza, yeah. occurred during yeah. her 20th year. Uh, well, right. that would have been, she was what, 20? Ex except nine? that the first, that would mean that it, uh, um, so it could have been, it could have been since the first plague was 1918 that could mean that this was uh like 1958 oh mm. oh it in her uh the it says the annual epidemic of the influenza or spanish plague um so that would suggest that there oh, was okay. a plague yeah, okay. every That's important. you know yeah okay. so i didn't mean to be a stickler i just wanted to hear <laughs> no, other it's, thoughts on that it's it's it, it's weird it's just <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it does not, uh, given how momentous the 30s and 40s were in Britain, the lack of historical accuracy is is weird. Yeah. Not even yeah, weirder than said, the language. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. said one guy said he had yeah. fought in, two, in said, the two wars. And I thought, and no. I thought that was weird because I was like, what? Well, I didn't think World War II happened here. Well, yeah, uh, let's see, where's the... Where's the, where's the, God heart, mm. it's, it's this Claude guy, um, oh, yeah. uh, this guy. Um, uh, there's, there's something he's, I, I mean, I can, I didn't know we'd end up talking about this, but uh, there's a thing about him being in the wars, but they're not, they're not real battles. It's like all the, the, the uh, um, movie stars that Seth is obsessed with, they're not real people. Right. So, you know, it's just, or Souk Bind. Souk Bind is not a real plant. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, 
confession to make on soup since you brought up soup bind um i read it on my kindle uh -huh. and i have become very spoiled by being able to touch on a word right. that's unfamiliar yeah. to look it up and yeah. there were a lot of those kind of words <laughs> right but, yeah yeah but when you looked it up it always said made up things in cold comfort farm yeah. or made up yeah. plants in literature <laughs> yeah 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 uh yeah i mean i i will say so i told y'all before we started reading that the movie was better than the book and it wasn't this was my third time reading it and this time i actually read it really slowly like with a ruler and a pencil and underlined and this time I'm like, all right, this is a pretty darn good novel. Um, before I gave it four stars, this time I might finally give it five because I finally got all the jokes. It actually was really funny. <laughs> um, I mean, what if, how about Amos? Those of you who saw the movie, <laughs> Amos is preaching. Ian McKellen, oh my gosh. <laughs> the, the cast was incredible for the entire movie. It was just a yeah. star-studded cast. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I, I couldn't have picked better actors to kind of fill in the roles, but yeah, uh, Ian McKellen did Amos perfectly. Oh you know, gosh. the brimstone and fire and... <laughs> no, me, no butter in hell. <laughs> the quivering the quivering that everybody was doing in church i'm like oh wow <laughs> one of the ford vans go about in one of the it's just yeah it, it's just so much fun and um uh another one rufus sewell that the, who, who played seth yeah that was my introduction to him and and the the move this movie is why i have been a fan of his work for the rest of my life um mm -hmm. A lot of fun, just so much fun. And um, he's easy on the eyes, too. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which works yeah. for the Seth character, you know, because right. yeah. who else is well, going to turn into a movie star at the end just I on mean, his looks alone? So, the I loved the description of, of, of who he, who he was, of who Seth was. Um, By by Neck, by the producer. By Mr. Neck. No, this was by the author. It was oh, that okay. um uh that he was just um oh here it is. A silence fell. The young man stood in the warm light of the declining sun, his bare throat and boldly molded features looking as though they were bathed in gold. His pose was easy and graceful. A superb self-confidence radiated from him as it does from any healthy animal. He met Mr. Neck's stare with an impudent stare of his own, his head lowered and slightly forward. He looked exactly like what he was, the locally sec the locally success. All right. The locally sexually successful bounder. Millions of women were to realize in the next five years that Seth could be transported in fancy to a Welsh mining village, a shoddy north country seaside town, a Ross city in the middle plain in the plains of the Middle West, and still remain eternally and unchangeably the local irresistible bounder, which means a cat or a, you know. So um I mean, I guess, I guess Seth, Seth might be Wickham or Henry <laughs> Crawford with less money. Um, uh, he doesn't think very much of women. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I still want to know, though, I'm going to change to a different character real quick. Aunt Ada Doom. What did she see in the damn shack or shed? Yes, what did she see? Like at the end, she's they're almost gonna tell her, and then she gets distracted, and then we never hear. Well, I she, think she was gonna movie. tell her actually about the uh oh the, what the family did. You're the right, family. you're right, you're right. That's yeah. what she was gonna yeah. tell her was what yeah. what yeah. was owed her for yeah. you know what happened and between the, her father and, the, and yeah. Them. yeah, there's you're right, yeah. 
Flora Both says, those questions. and did the goat die? I know. Um, uh, I think in the movie, she says she doesn't remember. She doesn't remember what she That's saw, right. just that it was yeah. nasty. Yeah. Say that. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I mean, it, it's one of those things of like, um, if if this were written, we we don't think seeing something involves trauma in in the same way. I mean, it is a it is a novel about trauma. It's not a novel mocking trauma. Um, um, but yeah, we don't normally say that just seeing something is is enough to like ruin people's lives in quite the same way. Um, I, I, this is, this is a, a paragraph from the wedding. There they all were enjoying themselves, having a nice time and having it in an ordinary human matter, manner, not having it because they were raping somebody or beating somebody or having religious mania or being doomed to silence by a gloomy earthy pride or loving the soil with the fierce desire of a lecher or anything of that sort. No, they were just enjoying an ordinary human event like any of the other millions of ordinary people in the world. And I can imagine Jane Austen enjoying this book. Um, and I also wondered if, if you could write a satire of Austen in the same way you could write a satire of, of you know, Hardy or the Brontes or um, D.H. Lawrence. And I think maybe you can't because Austin's already funny. It's hard to satirize humor. Oh, yeah, she's already satire. Satirizing. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I just say, I, I actually, I didn't see any references to this, but I thought that it was kind of satirizing uh, Bronte because of, Delphine roaming the hills, like mm -hmm. the moors and the, you know, that kind of thing. And then uh, Seth being sort of like Heathcliff, being this angry young man. Um, yeah. And then the lady, yeah. the mysterious woman up in the attic, yeah. being like the J Jane Eyre. So oh. I, I kind of thought, this reminds me of this. I wonder if she was, you know, touching on that, on the Bronte. You, uh, that is a, uh, um, that's a good connection. The the mad woman in the attic, actually, that is. I hadn't uh um they're not I mean, I'm not an expert in Stella Gibbons, but when I looked around, they talked more about um uh that there was a, a kind of novel that was popular um at the time. They called them the Loam and Love Child novels, um and which may have been descendants of um the brontes um uh uh the the downs one thing i when i when i like googled the geography so if you've seen pictures of the the white cliffs of dover that's what the downs are the downs are um uh these great they're pretty close to the sea so um the downs are like great big cliffs um um and it made a difference for me to know that that was where elphine was walking um well they do make a reference to the brontes through mr mybug of course uh, um <laughs> who of course yes. i'm sorry i'm sorry the sisters didn't write it it was all branwell branwell wrote all of them <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so. of course of course yeah, so there is that reference kind of written yeah. within the novel as well, yeah. you know. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um yeah. Uh, yeah. The other thing that I thought was kind of interesting and um, you know, kind of making parallels between other novels is they're talking about um, you know, she picks up Mansfield Park pretty far into the book, actually. It's kind of close yeah. to the end in order to kind of renew her spirits. But I was kind of thinking in some ways, kind of Cold Comfort Farm, the place is a lot like Mansfield Park in the way where it's almost its own character within the book. And That's so, yeah, yeah, so I was kind of thinking that too, that, you know, it almost had its own, you know, 
I, I don't know. It, it, it had its own place. It was more than just a place. It was almost characterized like Mansfield Park. And because everything's there, all these things keep happening. And a lot of it is connected to the place itself. Or Northanger Abbey. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's sort of spooky in a Northanger Abbey way for me. That's, that's a really, yes, actually, that's a really good comparison. Uh, it's like the anti Pemberley. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah. in some ways from the movie when I, I watched the movie yesterday um and sometimes when I was looking at the farm itself it reminded me of the 2005 Pride and Prejudice Bennett home and I'm like and this is where they weren't supposed to live <laughs> just I don't know where they shot it but I was like this looks kind of similar yeah <laughs> yeah were there walking through <laughs> yep what? I didn't hear you Kirk Oh, were there pigs walking through? Many, <laughs> many awesome fans object to 2005 because of the pigs. Yeah, <laughs> yep. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of of that, one one thing. Uh, so the year after she played um, Flora, Kate Beckinsale played Emma. So um, they're there is a considerable continuity in terms of how she plays, how her, the sensibility she brings to both characters. And then uh, Rupert Penry Royal was Dick Hawk Monitor in uh, the adaptation of Cold Comfort Farm. And he was um, Wentworth in the, uh let me see i wrote it down 2007 yeah. persuasion yeah. so um so there's a a a little bit of continuity there um and when you were away holly i was say saying that kate beckinsale has gone on to play lady susan so that's uh, right yeah and, and, I, and boy, boy she had some moments of lady susan the way she played the brothers off i thought for sure she would fail but no no she succeeded like lady yeah, susan she, yeah, she manipulated yeah. all of them yeah <laughs> no you're right i had forgotten that yeah 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 i think she had better intentions than lady susan I don't think she was quite as selfish yeah. as Lady yeah. Susan. Like she was obviously yeah. bored and wanted things to do, but I do think she was honestly trying to help them. Whereas I think Lady oh. Susan just wants to help herself. <laughs> oh, well, true, true. Yeah, and, and I, I certainly agree with that. And the fact that she she gets rid of Amos for the betterment of the farm, not because yeah. she likes Reuben better, because Reuben is better manager. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Lady and, Susan certainly wouldn't have done that. <laughs> In, in uh, but when she's making these plans, um, uh, and Mrs. Oh my gosh, the casting of Joanna Lumley as Mrs. Smiley yes. instead of any twenty-six-year-old actress, brilliant, was brilliant. She was so good. But uh, Flora says, Mary, you know I hate parties. My idea of hell is a very large party in a cold room where everybody has to play hockey properly. But you put me off what I was going to say. When I have found a relative who is willing to have me, I shall take him or her in hand and alter his or her character and mode of living to suit my own ta taste. Then when it pleases me, I shall marry, which is essentially the plot of Emma. Um, uh, and also not really that generous it is just she is just you know it is just for her amusement um so what do we think of charles then as uh mr knightley They brought it out at the end of the movie. He seemed very Mr. Knightley, the way he was saying, I never approved of you dabbling in all these people's lives, but yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, other than that, during the book, I didn't really, well, he was kind of in the background, really. Right. right. He's just waiting for her to finish her job. He's just the, um, I did, I did really like that the, the the superficiality of the things like, you know, when she's, when Flora is in, in the throes of confessing her love to him, she says, oh, Charles, you do have heavenly teeth. And I just really, 
um, seem very British. <laughs> because most of them don't, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Could could we talk for a minute about the title and why the the being called Cold Comfort Farm? I'm sure that was quite intentional. <laughs> Um, so I Googled this and, um, uh, this, um, uh, that title was suggested to her by somebody else. She was gonna, let's see, what did she call it? Um, she had a much more awful name for it. Um. something like hate God. She was going to call it like a uh, hate God. Um, no, I'm not seeing it. Um, uh, maybe it was in the, um, Stella Gibbons originally called it um, something much worse. She was going to curse God farm. Stella Gibbons originally called it curse God. So the farm was curse God. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, Cold comfort yeah. is much better. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But I, I mean, all of the. You know, the fact that the bull is named Big Business, <laughs> the cows are feckless, graceless, aimless, and pointless. <laughs> I love that. It's very Dickens Trollope. Maybe maybe she borrowed from them as well. Let's see. Yeah. What, a bit, yeah. bit from Austin, a bit from Trollope, a bit from Dickens. <laughs> yeah. 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 She really just seemed to have fun. I mean, um, uh, and the the movie is perfect in that way because it's just like you know slightly under two hours of 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 just good humor mm. and silliness literary silliness i have to say one of my favorite parts of the entire book and uh film was when she gets uh the dish mop for adam <laughs> Um, <laughs> and then he still refuses to use it and still is cleaning all the dishes with a stick because his mop is so nice. Yeah. <laughs> and it becomes yeah. a little so trophy cute. for him. Yeah. And and when he leaves to go to Houchaker Hall, he's 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 it's it's clutched as you know one of his most prized possessions. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Going back real quick to the title, uh, Cold Comfort Farm, of course, obviously Cold Comfort, but I was also thinking, you know, Jane Austen always pretty much names her books of what the problem is, Pride and Prejudice, Sense and Sensibility, Emma, you know, whatever the biggest problem in the novel is, and I kind of felt Cold Comfort Farm was kind of along the same way. The problem is the farm itself, and, you know, the, the lack, I mean, I guess you could say Aunt, Aunt Ada Doom kind of was the problem as well, but you know it was more the farm itself and keeping everybody there that was kind of causing issues. Or, or you could say that the cold comfort of of making everyone miserable because you were miserable, right? That that I mean that that is the thing. A you know Aunt Ada chooses to make everyone else miserable because she was miserable. Um. And that that is pretty cold comfort. Oh. Um, so I like right. I like her ending though. Yeah. Gosh, I really like her ending. <laughs> she heads off to France and yeah. gonna yeah. travel the <laughs> world, you know, as a worldly woman. I just yeah. it and was she's, delightful. <laughs> she's not gonna pluck her eyebrows yep. or or get in by it. With, yeah, with with twenty <laughs> five year old boys. Mm -hmm. who just, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. And it that's was really the, perfect. That's the line. The um, 
the the um you if you saw the movie you probably um heard heard that bit where um uh aunt ada says she she thanks flora for explaining to her what a pleasant life could be had in this world by a handsome sensible old lady of good fortune blessed with a sound constitution and a firm will and and then you probably caught that they say that's from jane austen when it's not yeah. <laughs> I was going through my head going, I don't think that was from Jane Austen, but although in some ways Aunt Ada Doom did remind me a little bit of Lady Catherine. A little bit. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Just very yeah. angry at the world and knows yeah. best and everybody's gonna do what she says. And yeah. 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 She's very Aunt Catherine-esque. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Did we hit all the characters? I'm trying to go through my head. Did we talk about all of them yet? We didn't really talk about Judith. I confess I wouldn't know what to make of Judith if I hadn't seen the movie. She's, the actress who plays her is, is fabulous. Um, and she's, she's the one we meet first who keeps talking about Robert Post child. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I really, I really, Eileen Atkinson is her, her name. Not that I'm familiar with her other work, but yeah, she's, she's, um, um, just, you can do whatever you want, Robert's post-child, as long as you don't, you know, impinge upon my, my, my solitude and sadness, you know, just, just, yeah. I have to say her ending was the one that kind of confused me the most. I, I wouldn't mind hearing what your thoughts are on how that fixes anything because basically she goes off with a psychiatrist to some hospital uh, well, I, 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 just, you, you can go ahead and clarify for me because that was probably the one thing that kind of confused me the most of the ending to, to some spa to some like you know like like a uh, behavioral therapy kind of play to like you know in inpatient um uh i, I mean like like a, a a a really rich person might go like i know they have them for we think of them in terms of different kind of problems like i know um uh people with eating disorders will go to certain kinds of inpatient living facilities where they'll you know um uh, if it's really pathological, uh, you can send your kid to one of those pray away the gay places. Um, uh, rich people with substance abuse might go to really, really nice um, facilities, someplace pretty. So, so it's something. It's something like that, and it's to get over, um, to be treated for depression, basically, um, and the fact that she is so in love with her weird son that she put makes little little shrouds to put over every one of his 200 pictures that she has in her room um so um and who who knows who like who knows if um like you know i don't know it uh she might be able to go she doesn't care about any of her other kids she doesn't care about elphine she doesn't care about reuben she only cares about seth so who knows really what happens to her um, I did love the moment in the movie that's not in the book where Mr. Neck sees her and he says, I take her too, but she's kind of gloomy. <laughs> um, yeah, because she really was throwing a good dramatic uh, acting yeah. skills right yeah. there when Seth was yeah. leaving. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, That was a good addition to the film. I was actually shocked. A lot of times films don't always do the book's justice, but it really follows yeah. it well. Yeah. You yeah. know, I mean, obviously yeah. there's stuff that's cut and everything like any film because you're taking a novel and putting it down to an hour and 45 minutes, yeah. but they really did follow it closely. And almost everything that doesn't follow is an improvement. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. It's just so well done. It's just, yeah, it's just so well done. 
did the film handle the the wives who were in the village well as well? Did they come come up troping up or something like that? <laughs> they that that is that is one omission that is yeah you're right that's that there's nothing like that in the in the novels no. i mean in the the movie um they seem irrelevant um no. uh i don't i'm not quite sure why um and and uh ruben's probably gonna end up marrying rennet instead of that that you can see why you, the 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 wife that flora proposes for him is 15 and he's like mm. and uh that was a good choice not to have Ruben um, planning to marry a 15 year old. Yeah. Dick Hawk Monitor also was not as vapid. They weren't quite so. Um, Flora has a lot of, you know, Dick Hawk Monitor is basically the 20th century version of Bingley. And Flora does not think very highly of him. She thinks he's dumb, and 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 he he is. Um, but it's it's interesting um, to have to have somebody who is educated um, to 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 consider herself. I mean, Flora really is kind of like um, Elizabeth Bennet in that she thinks of herself as a gentleman's daughter, even if she doesn't have a lot of money. So she would consider herself the equal of 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 um, Darcy and Bingley, but she does not respect them. She thinks they're vapid fools. I wonder if she ever writes her novel when she turns 53. <laughs> <laughs> there, so apparently, uh, apparently there is a sequel to this, but but nobody oh. gives, nobody cares. Um, uh, um, nothing Stella Gibbons ever wrote um, was as popular as Cold Comfort Farm, which I understand she really resented. Hmm. Um, she was very angry that she never. Um, She never equaled her early success with anything else. Looks like there might be two sequels. There might, yeah. There's Conference at oh, Cold Comfort Christmas. Farm and Christmas at Cold Comfort Farm, both by her. So interesting. Yeah, that'd be, I, I just kind of wondered because the movie ended a little differently where she's like, I don't think I'll ever write again, but the book never mentions that. So I always wonder, you know, she makes yeah. that declaration to Mary in the beginning of, I'm going to write a novel when I'm 53, that's just as good as persuasion. So now I'm gonna yeah. start my study of humankind in order to do so. Yeah. So I just kind of wonder where she ended up at 53 and does she write? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was cute in the movie, the way she kept trying to write about the golden orb. Yeah. She kept <laughs> she kept getting stuck on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some of the overwrought that I did really like in the in the novel, the way she'd have you know she put three stars when she thought she'd written a really awesome. What? Somebody's mad at me over here. What is your problem? Dog. Oh, dog's unhappy. Um. Uh. Yeah putting okay. two or three stars by by uh passages that she thought were just her best flowery prose um and there is very little of that next to none of that in austin a little bit in persuasion a little bit of stuff about um uh the landscape and stuff but yeah there's it's it's uh um mm. Which she might have edited out, which would be actually a great tragedy. I know some people say, "Oh, yeah, it, it's too much," but I think the, the paragraph describing Lyme is is, is wonderful. Yeah. I don't I don't normally go for diversions like that, but but I I approve of it in persuasion. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I mean, Austin Austin could Austin could write whatever she wanted. Yeah. Okay. Is it?
thank you for clarifying the stars thing. I just sort of skipped over that. I don't know why this is here. And I was reading it late last night. Okay. It's, <laughs> she, she, uh, it's in, she, it's, it's in the introduction of the preface or whatever she calls it that she explains oh, right. what that is. Oh, right. Yeah. I had read a hundred pages of it in. 2020 and then gave up on it for whatever reason. So, so I, I didn't, so I said, is fairly quickly, so I, I must have just skipped right over it. <laughs> and I definitely, I feel like it's better at the end. It yeah. certainly has a big payoff. Like it, it might take a little while to get into, but the payoff is worth it once you get there. Like as I was starting, I'm like, oh, I'm not sure if I really like this. I'm not sure if I, you know, like I wasn't hating it, but it's like, uh, but then as, as it got toward the end, I'm like, okay, now everything's coming yeah. together. It's all making yeah. sense. And, yeah. I, and by the end, I loved the book. I thought it was very good, but yeah, toward the beginning, when I first started, I'm like, I, I would pick this up and continue, but if it were not for this and I have to finish it, well, right. I guess I have to, but I want to, so. I, did, I don't know. I really enjoyed Mary's obsession, Mary Smiling's obsession with Brazier's. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just the, the 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 because that's something you for sure don't get in Austin is much reference to underclothes. So true. <laughs> I noticed some things that um I guess they would say today might be sort of anti-Semitic, like um, in Mr. the beginning, Mybug. they yeah. went by, yeah, and, and they drove by, she said they drove by a Jew shop or something like that, and I was like, what is she talking about, but um, anyway. Yeah, yeah, that that is, that is one of the um, uh, common criticisms of the novel, and there's no point in pretending that it's not problematic, yeah. The same with Angela Thurkill. She has some some really interesting comedy of manners, and then she throws in some some complete nonsense of that variety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, it's of the time, and you know, just throwing it out there real quick. You all saw that Northanger Abbey got a uh, yes a warning. <laughs> a uh, trigger warning attached to it by some university recently. Yeah. Because, Greenwich. Greenwich university. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Because of its toxic relationships and stuff like that. So I was like, wow. Oh wow. We have to have a trigger warning for that. All right. Wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, what, what next? You know, I mean, I, I, I understand like putting trigger warnings in, especially if there's something incredibly traumatic, like sexual abuse or anything like that, that could severely trigger someone. But I'm like, is that something we really have to put a trigger warning for is Northanger Abbey? <laughs> it, it does, it does. I mean, uh, the general is, is a bad guy, but that's not really but isn't I mean aren't there bad guys in most novels much, like, like isn't that kind of there's always going to be someone who there's, there's there has to be some sort novels without conflict are not that interesting yeah. exactly yep. yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah I just kind of find it interesting I'm like uh, you know our young adults growing up not you know who are first getting out first getting into Austin are they so you know yeah. sensitive that they can't figure that out for themselves that the general is yeah. a bad guy and that Isabel and uh John Thorpe are you know not good friends and I, I mean isn't that kind of the point of yeah. the book and so yeah. and they they probably face a lot worse characters than Isabella and John Thorpe every day of yeah. yeah 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 Isabella and John Thorpe are a dime a dozen honestly yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, but anyway, I was just kind of thinking of that when you were saying that the anti-Semitic stuff, you know, I, I just kind of feel like it, it was different in history, you know, I mean, that was unfortunately acceptable then, like, right, right. And, 
Context is everything. Right, well, exactly. And I, I just, I always just worry that people are going to, you know, this whole cancel culture of, oh, we're going to get rid of it because it has anti-Semitic things. So therefore we're not going to talk about, it, we're not going to read it. We're not going to study it, you know? And it's like, I understand it's there and we obviously can address it and say it's not okay. Yeah. But, you know, if well, we start getting rid of too many things, don't we become a lot like the Nazis right. who were buttering books that right, they didn't right. to read? I totally had, agree. I totally agree. You know, well, I mean, especially since what Flora doesn't, you know, it's not like Flora ever says that she finds Mr. Mybug repulsive for his his hooked nose and his Eastern European ancestry. She finds him. OK, I will do that, Dad, just a minute. She doesn't like him because he's rather fat and an intellectual. So what's that actually Jew, Jews were considered, were often considered, uh, uh, there, there is a strong tradition Judaism of being intellectual. Yeah. But she has a lot of disdain for intellectuals generally. I mean, she would not have liked, she would not have liked Virginia Woolf um at all um you know um like how intellectual i mean she she says she says really mean things about smart people um um which i thought was funny you know that you just you just didn't want to hang out with them they had boring parties and they all slept with each other and stuff like that so um which which would have been a critique of of a um Virginia Woolf and the Bloomsbury people and stuff like that. And yet she's playing world class personality chess with this whole family. Okay, yeah. if I move this one over here, then this yeah. that over here. So she she is an intellectual in some ways that she figures out and the way she figures out how to reach Aunt Doom is just I wish well, we she, saw that. Uh, <laughs> She, except that she sees herself as motivated by the higher common sense, the book she keeps mentioning, instead of just some, uh, so there's an element of pragmatism, as opposed to kind of like philosophy for its own sake or something like that. Um, and I will, sometime I will, dad, um, uh, um, or there's a place where when they're in London getting um, Elphine's dress, uh, Stella, uh, uh, Flora briefly considers taking them to a horrible, horrible play. Some really, um, Well, I, I can't. In, anyway, there's some awful play that she thinks about taking them to, and then she's like, "No, I won't do that. We'll go. We'll go to some other play and have a nice time instead of a nasty time." That's one of the things. That's a recurrence. People choosing to have a nice time instead of a nasty time, um, because so many of these people chose to have nasty times, and she thought that was stupid. Um, um, Oh, like uh, the woman that Elphine tried to lace herself on. Um, uh, I bet she wore her hell. She had a smock embroidered with ho hollyhock, said Flora resignedly. And I bet she wore her hair in shells round her ears and a pendant made of hammers, hammered silver with a little bit of blue enamel in the middle. And did she try to grow herbs? You know, so basically me, basically, you know, your middle-aged woman who you know your middle-aged white woman who wears eccentric jewelry i'm like <laughs> yeah i recognize that so um um yeah one of my other favorite parts of the novel was i was her name miriam the uh -huh. woman who was pregnant yeah. in the beginning yeah 
Um, I love how she went in there and basically told her about contraception and how to prevent yeah. pregnancies. And then she's like, oh, that sounds horrible or whatever, like against God's nature or whatever she had said. And then Flora leaves and the mom's like, but maybe we should try that. I know. I loved that. <laughs> I love that. Mrs. Beetle. Yeah, that was that was just wonderful. Yeah, that was really <laughs> Yeah, I, I loved when when at the counting when when uh, um Irk is upset because he's not going to be able to marry Elphine after all because she's going to marry Dick Hawk Monitor and and um and and uh this is not in the the book it's in the movie uh Miriam says she ain't worth it have me instead and uh. Miriam Margolis says, don't you have him ducky unless you want him? And she says, it's all right. I can make him wash a bit if I want, if I, if I feel <laughs> like it, it's just, it's just, <laughs> just, yeah, it's just silly and earthy and yeah, I'm just, really, I really, really, really liked the movie. Yeah. Um, no, it was a good pick. You, you picked a good one this time around. Good, so. good. Yeah. So, and everybody who didn't read it, we can just feel very sorry for them because they must have had a nasty time instead of a nice time. <laughs> Anything, right. anybody want to say something to sum up? Do we all see how this is? Um, an inheritor of Austin. I mean, even aside from the ways that that Gibbons mentions and invokes Austin, but um, yeah, just the insistence on having a nice time instead of a nasty time. Okay, I will in just a minute. My dad's very upset that he doesn't get to participate in this conversation but he has never read Jane Austen or Stella Gibbons so <laughs> it, it's earthy Austen <laughs> yes it's earthy Austen that is a good way to put it yeah but it's very similar too because it's still a, you know kind of does still take place in the drawing rooms you know it's not a big you know there's no war you know I guess there's mention of war but you're not in the middle of a war there's no battle there's no big grand politicians no you know it's all still taking place in that kind of minutia small village small town drawing rooms you know just well, different it, time period it ends with a wedding mm -hmm. you know <laughs> the, it, it's it's so maybe it's a very, second coming so <laughs> it end it ends with two Actually, it ends with uh, because um, uh, uh, Rennet and Mr. Mybug get married. It's true. And in fact, she's crying because their wedding was boring. So he's going to give her a better wedding. And then we know that uh, Flora and Charles are going to get married. So, yeah, it's very much about um, just people having a good time doing normal human things. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it starts like a lot of Austin's novels too, where you take your heroine and put her into kind of destitute situation, you know, yes. mm. very much. Yeah. 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 And having, yeah, having to change her situation because she, I mean, it's that's so much like um, both Mansfield Park uh, and um, uh, Sense, Sense and Sensibility. sensibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, look at this. We managed to fill up almost an hour. We did. Fantastic. So, well, thank you guys, everyone, for showing up today. And